Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Now today I actually have a really special addition to my craft distillery series. This is from the Crowded Barrel Distillery and specifically the Eleanor 1860. It has a few different expressions and I'll get into that later. But why is this special? Well, a lot of you watching my channel for the first time probably are here because you know of the Whiskey Vault. And the Whiskey Vault are two guys, Daniel Rex. You can't keep up with my speed. You can't keep up with my speed. And they crowdsourced a distillery. Now we've all thought about doing this at some point, I'm sure, or at least starting our own little distillery. And, and most of us came to our senses. I'm just gonna let that stay out there for a minute. <laughs> Most of us came to our senses. Now the good news is I've met these guys and they're they're totally with it. You know, they know what they're doing. And just by meeting them, you can tell that they they actually really have this together. But what they did is not just crowdsourced in terms of money. They actually used their group of people called the Whiskey Tribe to pick what goes into each barrel and or you know into each bottling. And that's just so cool to me, you know, like they actually used people who, who may not even know anything really about whiskey to do everything from, you know, like how much char to uh, how deep of a char and even little things to like which lights to put on the, on the distillery. It's just such a cool concept. But anyway, this place is based out of Southern Austin and specifically one of the highest points in Austin. And um, they've got this place called the Wizard Academy, which is where the Whiskey Vault is filmed out of on my way over to the tower to go check out the whiskey vault. This is an ominous looking road. Check this out. You're like imposing. And then there's freaking lions. This is awesome. Filmed out. <laughs> it's a five story tall building and um, I ended up getting to go out there. And, and when I was up at the top, you look around and you notice how high up you are. And not only that, but how flat Austin is. <laughs> but it's just such a cool place to go. So anyway, this is a, a great place for a distillery. Now, they run this with a couple of other people. Emma. Getting my bottle. And their head, uh, head distiller, Deb. I mean, that sometimes I'd like to distill something, but I'm gonna have to ask Deb for permission. <laughs> and all four of them together created this whiskey. Now, they make no, um, no, you know, they don't hide the fact that it's MGP sourced, and that's totally fine. Um, they are working on their own stuff, but for their first four expressions, they used MGP. And as I talked about in one of my previous videos, which I'll put a link to up there, there's nothing wrong with using MGP, especially when you are first starting out. It's a good way to get your, your feet on the ground and be able to create the thing that you really, really want to make. Now, that being said, you know, all of this doesn't matter um, if they don't make a good product. <laughs> and I want to talk a little bit about what this is. So as I said, this is the Eleanor and specifically this is the 1860 version, but they have four different versions. They have the 1856, 58, 60, and 62. Now the 56 and the 58, they're sold out. Um, the 60 and the 62, if they're not already sold out, probably already, uh, probably will be sold out very soon, but they're going to be making more. But the question that I had when I was researching this, which unfortunately I couldn't get a very definitive answer on is why is it called Eleanor? And so because I couldn't get a definitive answer, I'm basically just gonna tell you what the, the webpage says um, as far as where the name came from. So they are writing this 10 chapter story and each one of these stories or each one of these chapters is 100 words or less. And it tells of this woman named Eleanor who had an admirer, um, this guy named Valentine uh, Weiss. And Valentine basically, you know, he fell in love with Eleanor after watching her, I think it was beat a bunch of guys in a race and started leaving her apples, just bright red apples back in the 1800s. So, I mean, that was not a super weird thing, <laughs> but so, you know, leaving her these bright red apples in school and she would find them. And sometimes there'd be a note with them. Sometimes it would be like decorated a little bit, but one way or another, he would consistently do this specifically in places that she would find them. And after a couple of years of this, he finally kind of came up to her, tapped her on the, sh on the elbow and handed her an apple. And she was shocked to see it was him. And you know, it's kind of a love story between the two of them. They end up getting engaged. And the, right now they're on the fourth story, which is the 1862. And it kind of hints at um, Valentine going off to war. So I'm honestly, I'm pretty excited to see kind of like where the story goes. It's, it's, you know, a small little story. It's kind of inconsequential, but it's fun to read. And I like, anything with lore behind behind the labels. So keep it up. 
Anyway, none of this even matters if the product's not that great. So let's go into the nosing and the tasting here and talk about that. So, um, if you're enjoying this episode, specifically the craft distillery stuff, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments um, because, you know, they take a little bit of extra effort. They're not always the highest viewed videos, but I enjoy doing them. I like giving a little bit of extra exposure to smaller craft distilleries. I've got a few really exciting ones coming up as well, including one that I, I found out about while I was out in Austin for the opening of this distillery. Um, anyway, I'll talk about them in a couple of weeks. So. Let's go ahead and give this a nose. So if you were to let this breathe just a little bit longer, I, I always have that point where I pour this and then I immediately nose. It hasn't had a chance to really sim sim simmer down, but I always go ahead and take my notes before I film my episodes either way. Let this sit for just a little bit longer and some of that initial, um, Harsh is the wrong word. Some of the initial very strong nose will go away and you're gonna start picking out honey from this as well as um, I got white grapes from this which is uh, a fairly rare one for me personally, especially out of a bourbon. And um, it's got a bit of an undertone of, of rye or spice. And uh, all three of those things actually really mesh well together, especially the honey and the white grape. That's a, a cool nosing combination. All right, let's go ahead and give this a sip. Cheers. So one of the first things that you're going to notice when you sip this whiskey is it's got, it's got spice right off the bat, but it goes away pretty quickly. And I love that because it reminds you that you're drinking whiskey, you know? Well, you know, I've been talking to people in the comments somewhat recently, and they've been talking about how they enjoy you know, stronger, higher proof whiskeys because it reminds them that they're drinking whiskey. You know, something with bite. Now, I mean, this thing, I don't know if I said it earlier, this is 114.6 proof or 57.3%. That's pretty high. And you are gonna get some of that bite, but surprisingly not um, a ton from this whiskey. You mostly get that spice as soon as you, as soon as you sip on it. Um, it kind of fades away and you get into this like a buttery kind of honey flavor. Um, and then it kind of fades off and some of the some of the heat stays in your throat So I'd say the finish is a little little warm, but in a good way um, The intro to it is spice and then it's got a nice middle ground of like a honey with you know a little creaminess a little butter and then Smooth uh, a little little heat on the way up Either way, it's an interesting dram for sure um, So my overall on this whiskey I don't think it's too hard to, to see that I enjoy this. Um, you know, it's, I ended up buying this bottle myself, just in case anybody out there is wondering. It was 50 bucks at the distillery. And I am very happy I bought it. I was actually, I wasn't super on the fence because obviously I was out there, I was gonna buy it either way, but I'm happy that I did. Um, you know, a $50 bottle for 114 proof is a great deal for sure. Um, so that really was, was not the concern. Um, honestly, my concern was more packing it in my, in my uh, luggage on the way home. But either way, I am glad I have this. I'm gonna sip it and share it quite a bit. And excuse me, I am looking forward to the day when they are distributed. A little bit further because at the moment you either need to be a patron or be in the area of Austin, Texas in order to get this because they don't have a license to distribute, which is a shame. <laughs> but I have a feeling those guys are going to have their hands full for the next uh, few months or years, hopefully, getting some more stuff out there because so far I've tried all four of the ones that they put out there. This one's my favorite, but I think that they're going to have their hands full. Um, they've got a good selection of people there who know what they're doing, and they've got a good, good group of backers to, to help them make some decisions and, and really drive it forward. So either way, if you are able to get your hands on this one, it's a solid buy from me, for sure. And uh, I don't think you'd be able to stock it, frankly, because they, they don't make enough. <laughs> so if you can get your hands on it, absolutely buy it. If you happen to be drinking it along with me, cheers to you. And um, I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.